Jarvis, drop my needle. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and today we are going to talk about merch. I know we brought up some of these things before, uh, but I want to touch base on, uh, you know, some updates about some Venom figures that are coming out. But I also want to get into some Across the Spider-Verse stuff that's, uh, you know, already coming out and stuff that is about to come out. And there's some leaks and everything, so if you don't want any spoilers for Across the Spider-Verse, I'll give you a warning at some point in this video. And I would say don't watch past that. Although I did post some things on my community uh, tab and on my Instagram. So if you follow me on any of those, uh, you've probably seen some of the stuff. But I want to give you a warning for those who just watch my videos. You know, stay away at a certain point in this video. I'll let you know because we're going to talk about some of the other spider characters that are apparently going to be showing up in this movie based on merchandise leaks. Uh, but I also do want to talk about the merch in general. So let's get into Venom first. So we'll get into the pre-spoiler stuff. And we'll talk about uh, the Null 2-pack with Venom and Null. Venom with the wings, obviously. Um, this is a 2-pack that I think is coming out in December. Although I think I've seen some reviews of it up already. Um, Hasbro is very bad with their distribution. So I'm not... That's why I just... If I see a Hasbro figure and I want it, I might buy it. But I typically don't plan to buy Hasbro stuff. Um, so with Transformers, everything. It's just have to be in the moment because their distribution is awful, especially compared to someone like Todd McFarlane, who when he says something comes out in October, it usually comes out like the last week of September. You know, he, he's pretty on point with his distribution. I don't know how he does it, but uh, he does a great job. So that's why I like collecting his figures because I know when they're coming out for sure and I can plan accordingly financially. Uh, but with Hasbro, it's kind of all over the place. And they have some business practices that I don't like. Uh, Hasbro, where they'll like, you know, do Moon Knight and Mr. Knight in one series. And the Build-A-Figure will be Ultron. But then in the next wave, it's a bunch of non-Moon Knight characters. And the Build-A-Figure is Conchu. And I hate that because I have to spend $200 to buy Conchu, which oh, I don't have to. But I'm, and I'm not gonna uh, because I don't support those kind of business practices uh, where it's like, I want Conchu. And if he was in a line of mostly Moon Knight figures, I would get it. But since he's in a line with no Moon Knight figures, I'm not going to get it. And I'm probably not even going to get the Moon Knight and Mr. Knight just out of spite and pettiness because <laughs> I just don't like how Hasbro does their stuff sometimes. Um, and Ace is drinking water right now. If you can't hear, uh, it's very loud. You're allowed to drink water. It's all right. Come on over. Um, so besides the Moon Knight stuff, though, I went on a little rant there. Uh, the Venom 2-pack, uh, I believe it's coming out soon. The pre-orders are still up on the Hasbro website, so I know some of you, uh, we've talked about it before, and I know some of you are going to get it. So if you are, let me know down below if you've pre-ordered it and, and if you're excited to get it, because uh, I know some of you are definitely excited. Uh, but for me, something I'm going to get that, uh, you know, if I see it again, it's going to be, it's an Amazon exclusive. It's already pre-sold out, so it depends if Amazon's going to get any more. But it is this Life Foundation completion set where you get Venom, Agony, and uh, and Riot, and which is cool because we've been wanting those figures to complete our Life Foundation set. And I this is actually nice. Hey, thank you, Hasbro, because <laughs> they could have easily done like another wave of Venom figures, which that's cool too. I would have supported that um, and made the Build-A-Figure Riot. But this little three pack here for like seventy bucks is is a good deal. So uh, it's sold out now. But I'm sure I'll get it at some point. I'll hopefully get it at some point so I can complete my collection. And, uh, and I, you know, so I like that. I like that so some things Hasbro does do well, and I'm, that's one of them. I'm like, hey, cool. People wanting these two figures, you, you lumped them in with a Venom figure, uh, and then now you're going to release it at a good price. I'm, I'm all for that. So thank you, Hasbro. But unfortunately, it sold out already. <laughs> Pre-sold out. So I'll have to keep an eye on the, the link and stuff for it. And if you got it and pre-ordered it, let me know down below if you're excited to get that and complete your Life Foundation set. Because I think the Ryan Stegman artwork on it's really cool looking. And, uh, and I would like to have it just to complete my set for sure. So at some point, hopefully I'll, I'll be able to pick that up. Um, and then another thing is uh, Lego is releasing this cool Venom Build-A-Figure. And that looked really cool, so I wanted to share that here too. So that way we cover all of our bases, at least with some Venom merch. There, of course, there's always like Venom, Venomized Funko Pop characters and things like that. Um, I, I, you know, I'm not going to go over all that stuff, but uh, but I know some of that stuff's out there. And right now there's like a Mech Strike Venom Super Figure at uh, for Funko Pop at Walmart, and I see it every time I go to Walmart. So there are Venom stuff out there, and they're still making Venom, uh, you know, products and merchandise, which is awesome. And hopefully, as we gear up for the third movie we get another at least wave of Marvel Legend figures because that is pretty much the only thing that brings me back to buying Marvel Legend figures is when there's a whole wave of something I want. Um, and uh, yeah, so I hate when they, they piecemeal waves with like, oh, here's a couple. It's like, yeah, it's all Disney Plus characters, sure. 
but it's still like I don't want all those Disney Plus characters. I just want Moon Knight. <laughs> and then I would love if it was two Moon Knight figures and the Conchu was the build a figure and I got f maybe four figures that I really didn't want that much. That to me is a, I would I would probably uh, you know meet them halfway at something like that. But but what they're doing the way they're doing Moon Knight and Conchu, no way. I'm not supporting that. Um, but the Venom stuff. So far, they've been pretty good on it, so I will support that for sure. All right, so this is your spoiler warning because we're going to dive into Across the Spider-Verse stuff. Uh, part one, obviously, is coming out next year, but a lot of the merch has already started to come out because sometimes with these things, you can't stop the train once it's moving, once it leaves the station, and a lot of these products are popping up internationally and domestically, and they have images on them that kind of reveal characters that are going to be in this next movie many of which people probably weren't sure were going to be in this next movie. So it's kind of, you know, solidifying that there's a good chance that they're going to be in this next movie. So last chance, spoiler warning, we're going to get into Spider-Verse stuff and talk about Spider-Punk first, because I'm a big Hobie Brown fan and uh, they have a lot of merch coming out for him. Uh, so I'm wondering if he has a, maybe not a significant role in the movie, but maybe they give him one really solid scene. What I was thinking about was, you know, Hobie Brown, who is this version of Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Punk, He's, you know, plays punk music, he's got a guitar, and Spider-Gwen, or Spider-Woman, she's uh, in a band and she plays drums, so I thought that'd be cool to see a scene where, you know, the two of them are playing music or something, I think that could be kind of fun, or if they just talk about music, where he's like, hey, what's that, and she pulls out drumsticks, like, in her, you know, that are, like, on her suit somewhere, and he's like, oh, cool, and he pulls out his guitar, and he's like, we should rock out sometime, and then maybe Miles gets a little jealous, like, hey, whoa, what are you doing, man, that's, you know, I, I like her, what are you doing, um, but anyway, so I was thinking, like, oh, that's cool, the, the we're gonna see Spider-Punk, hopefully, in this movie, and that was even, you know, now the mask has come out so they have the guitar i saw it at target I, it's, like, it's a cool looking guitar plays three different versions of the spider-man theme song um and then you have the mask that's out for kids and then they revealed a, a puzzle just last night uh, an image of a puzzle that's coming out leaked and on the puzzle is spider punk in in the style that he's going to be in the movie so i think we got our confirmation we get in spider punk which is great <laughs> you know there's three three elements here that, sh that lean towards Spider-Punk. Um, so I'm excited because like I said, I like Hobie Brown. We did a Venom vlog episode on Spider-Punk and kind of his origin or his first story. And uh, yeah, Ace, I get it, man. He's breathing really heavy right next to me. We just got back from a walk. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really pumped for Spider-Punk. Uh, Spider -Punk. This is gonna be really cool to see that character. And I wonder who they're gonna voice, uh, you get to voice Hobie Brown because Hobie Brown, the Prowler, uh, is who he is in the comics mostly. Hobie Brown is known as the Prowler. Currently in the comics, he's Hornet. Uh, but the Prowler was played by Uncle Aaron, or Uncle Aaron in this universe is Prowler. So it's cool that we're getting Hobie Brown, because I was like, ah, oh, man, they did Prowler in the last movie, and they didn't do, they didn't even mention Hobie Brown, and I love Hobie Brown, so having this is, is really cool for me. Um, all right, also what we got, along with this puzzle reveal, we also saw images of uh, the cyborg Spider-Woman, um, so I'll put that image up there, and what is interesting about this character is there's also a toy that leaked where they're doing a toy of Cyborg Spider-Woman. And I'm really curious, because is she like a variant Spider-Gwen? You know, is she like someone who got captured by Alchemex and they, you know, they operated on her, turned her into a giant Frankenstein monster or something? Like, that could be really interesting to play with. And it could also give Spider-Gwen a, a, a kind of an arch nemesis in the movie or someone that she has to try to save. Because remember, in her universe, she never could save her Peter Parker so it'd be interesting that if she wants to try to save this alternate Spider-Gwen that got, you know, um, operated on and turned into a giant monster. Um, that could be cool. You know, I don't, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I'm just trying to speculate here uh, based on this character and what she looks like. Because she looks intense. <laughs> she looks like the nemesis in a Spider-Man costume. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it's really, it looks neat. So I'm, I'm curious to see what that character is all about in the movie. Um, and then we also have other masks, you know, merchandise-wise. We have the uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales mask. Uh, we also have a Spider-Man 2099 mask, which is really cool. Uh, there's a Miles mask that comes with web shooters that shoot discs out. Um, there's also a Spider-Gwen mask set that uh, for little girls that uh, shoots web little webbing out or something like that or shoots like discs out and stuff. Um, there's deluxe figures like the Cyborg Spider-Woman and then there's also the Miles Morales one that has the um, Venom Blast electricity thing uh, with him. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff coming out and there's also the, the game Trouble, the board game. This is when we found out along with the puzzle now, the puzzle confirmed it, that there's a Scarlet Spider in this movie, uh, which is so cool. I mean... Spider-Punk and Ben Riley in this movie 
is just like the perfect Spider-Man movie for me, for someone like me. If they just add the slingers in at some point, I'll be so happy. I think they're also doing Japanese Spider-Man uh, in this as well. And maybe the Spider-Man T-Rex, because there's a toy of that, I think, out there as well. So, um, um, man, I mean, there's just so much. And I think the Lord and Miller, the producer of this movie, um, who made the first movie, produced the first one, and wrote it, I believe, um, they're awesome. You know, I got to meet them when I went to the premiere for Spider-Verse, thanks to my friend Andrew. And I had a blast there, and they were super cool. And they said in the interview that there's probably going to be over 200 different spider characters in this movie. Now, of course, not all of them are going to get major moments, but I imagine there's going to be a lot of cameos and little Easter eggs for those spider uh, characters. So, uh, so I'm not trying, not trying to get my hopes too high, but I would really like a good emotional arc with Ben Riley, like someone who's a clone of Spider-Man who is teaming up with these other Peter Parkers. Um, that just could be really cool. Plus he has blonde hair and the Peter Parker from Miles' universe had blonde hair. So I feel like if he sees him, he's gonna think it's his Peter at first. And he's gonna be like, no, sorry, my Peter maybe died or is, isn't, the, you know, or he's a clone or I don't know. However, they're gonna work out that story. It's gonna be complicated, I'm sure. Maybe they can simplify it. But seeing Ben in this would be really awesome. And if they gave him a good emotional arc, even if it's a small role like Spider-Man Noir had in the first movie, I would be totally on board with that. I just, I'm so excited to see Ben Riley. I'm very pumped for that. Um, and also Spider-Punk and all these other characters. I'm, I'm intrigued and I'm really getting excited, more excited for this movie. I love the first one so much. I must have seen it like 40 times now. I saw it maybe four times in a theater and I've watched it over and over and over on Blu-ray since then. And I'm just, I couldn't be more excited for the sequel. It's a bummer it got pushed back, but I know it's because they need more time to make the movie and uh, to make it look good and polish it and so I, I that's fine um there's other across the spider-verse stuff coming out uh the marvel collector box for september uh, on amazon that's going to be spider-man related or across spider-verse related and then there's some cool books coming out like the 60 year you know uh the first 60 years of spider-man or something like that it's called and that's kind of tied in a little bit to the across the spider-verse because it has like a lot of different spider-man on the cover of the book um then there's also like a pop-up book that's coming out there's a like a guide book a guide to the spider-verse so there's a lot of things coming up this fall that are, you know, tying into this movie, some of which spoil, you know, characters that are in the new movie, but some of them that just are love letters and essentially to Spider-Man, like this first 60 years one. Um, and there's also now Phil Lord and Chris Miller posted the first official poster for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Part 1, which is this image here, Spider-Man fighting, uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales fighting Spider-Man 2099. And I guess it was just made for the crew. Uh, although I see people on Etsy and other places selling I think knockoff versions of them or eBay selling versions of them, um, but it's still cool and hopefully they release an uh, official version of this so I can buy one and hang it up somewhere. Uh, Cause I have a, a Japanese Spider-Man uh, poster of uh, that Spider-Man and then getting this would be cool cause I'm starting to make a little Spider-Man corner in my uh, living room next to all my Tokyo stuff. So that'd be cool to add, you know, this poster to that as well. Um, or just a cool movie poster for the new movie. So that's all. There's just, it's a lot. I mean, there's so much merch coming out for Across Spider-Verse. Some of it is already out and some of it's coming out. Um, but with all this news, you know, hopefully we'll get, you know, a Scarlet Spider figure in this, this style, animation style. Um, and also hopefully Spider-Punk uh, would be great, uh, you know, and then the spot. I mean, I think he's one of the main villains of this first movie. And I love that character a lot. And I love the design of him. And he's played by uh, Jason Schwartzman, I think, is doing his voice, which is really cool. Uh, so I, I'm just, uh, this sounds like a great sequel to the first one so far. It's got all the right elements. I just hope they pull it all together. Because that first one, I think, was, it surprised a lot of people. Even the people making the movie. I think they put their heart and soul into it. But they were probably wondering if it would do well. And although it wasn't a, a big hit at the box office... It slowly tr pulled in fans as it hit Netflix and other streaming services and, and digital and stuff. It pulled in more people that way, and it won like Academy Awards for Best Animation, which it rightly deserved. I mean, this movie was very unique, and they took risks with this film, story-wise and visual-wise, and I, I think and hope it paid off, and now that it's building this big Spider-Verse in animation, I hope we see Venom, you know, voiced by Tom Hardy. I hope we see everything and i still have my theory that at the end of this movie because all the animation styles change every time miles goes into another world i really hope at the end of this movie he enters the real world maybe with tom holland or you know eddie brock and he enters the real world and it's an, a, a live actor playing miles in the suit 
and that's our introduction to live action Miles is he sees himself in the real world and it's like okay there that's the actor who's now going to play him even if it's Shamik Moore which is awesome if it's Shamik Moore that would be cool too because he does a great job doing the voice of, of Miles and if they wanted to make him the live action one uh, actor who plays him too I'd be down for that as well so let me know what you think if you have any Across the Spider-Verse theories, uh, if there's any other Venom merch out there that you want me to talk about in a future video or post it on my community board or something like that. Let me know that as well, and uh, and we'll slowly start getting back into the way we used to do things on this channel where we try to cover as much as possible the Venom and now Spider-Man related because we're pretty much running out of Venom stuff to talk about. So I figure Across the Spider-Verse is a, a good thing to tie into this, especially since it's part of the uh, Sony Spider-Verse. And then obviously as we get Craven and Madam Web and other things like that, we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. And let me know down below if you want me to make a video, because apparently there's some rumors going out there about the Madam Web movie and what the story is. I'm waiting to hear more information, so that's why I haven't made a video on it yet. But if you want to discuss it, maybe we can do a live stream at some point coming up. Just let me know down below. Thanks so much for watching the show as always. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.